Good morning, it's Tuesday. We continue with 1 Timothy chapter 5. Today we read from verse 19. Do not receive an accusation against an elder, except on the basis of two or three witnesses. Those who continue in sin rebuke in the presence of all, so that the rest will also be fearful of sinning. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus and of his chosen angels to maintain these principles without bias, doing nothing in a spirit of partiality. So Paul is here continuing to teach Timothy the right way to judge, the right way to rule. And he says, do not receive an accusation against an elder uh, except on the basis of two or three witnesses. This is a principle carried over from the Old Testament where everything is established by the witness of two or three, not just by one. You can always have some disgruntled person, uh, some person who just wants to, has it in for their leaders uh, and wants to get at them in some way. So uh, an accusation needs to have support in order for it to be escalated uh, into church discipline. This is very, very important. It's important to um, stay with these principles of God's word. Do not receive an accusation against an elder except on the basis of two or three witnesses. And then there's a foundation um, to look into the matter. Those who continue in sin rebuke in the presence of all so that the rest will be fearful of sinning. Of course, when we uh, call out a sinner, our hope is that they would uh, repent of their sins and turn uh, back to following God. And this is the case also with leaders, but also it's a warning to others that sin will not be tolerated. And it's very important that we don't cover up uh, sins of our leaders or anybody's sins, that uh, we repent of our sins. God is just and faithful that he forgives us and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And then he uh, solemnly charges Timothy in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus and of his chosen angels to maintain these principles without bias. Uh, this is very, very important, doing nothing in the spirit of partiality. So uh, Paul is reminding Timothy to always be unbiased uh, in everything, in, in all judgments, in all uh, matters, dealing with people, no partiality, showing no preference. Um, but being fair with everybody and that really is sticking true to God's Word and we know that the only rule of law is the Word of God we know that the only standard is the law is the Word of God and so we stay with that we show no partiality uh, and then we're on the right track so there's some very sound advice here uh, not only uh, in so far as it deals with church discipline but also uh, in principle uh, that we can take into our daily lives that every matter is established by the testimony of two or three um, and that we show no partiality uh, that we love everybody without discrimination and that we are uh, fair in all matters lord god heavenly father we bow our heads before you in the presence of jesus and we thank you and we come to you in his name we thank you for this new day we thank you for your mercies that are new every morning as the birds around me, Lord, are waking this morning with the first rays of sunlight, we also, Lord, just wake up and we say to you, we love you, we worship you, we praise you, we honor you, we lift our voices, and we say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your incredible love. Thank you for saving us from darkness and bringing us into your light. Thank you for protecting us through the night. Thank you for a new day that you have given to us. May we live this day, Lord, in a way that brings honor and glory to your name. We thank you for the country in which we live in and we pray for our leaders as your word directs. We ask that you give them wisdom and understanding and help them in all things, Lord, to be honorable and, and to do what is right. We live in very difficult and dangerous times and they need your godly wisdom. Lord God, Heavenly Father, have mercy. Have mercy on the Ukraine, have mercy on Israel and Palestine and other regions where there's conflicts, Lord, we pray for peace. We pray for those who are suffering, for those who have lost everything, for those who are displaced. Lord, have mercy. We commend to you, Lord, those who are sick and those who are dying. We pray, Lord, for your peace. We pray, Lord, for your healing upon the sick. We pray for those who are recovering from operations, that you would, Lord, just strengthen them and help them and bring them back to full health again. Heavenly Father, have mercy. Have mercy on the souls that are lost. We pray for those who do not know you yet, Lord, that today would be a day when many would come to know you. We ask that our lives be ordered aright. We pray, Lord, that we would live according to your word. I thank you for all who listen to these messages. You know what they need, Lord, and I thank you that you are with them and as you are with me. And Lord, we are never alone. We always have you. We thank you and bless you. 
Our desire is to grow in you, to honor you, to bring you glory and praise. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for us. Thank you, Father, that you didn't leave Jesus in the grave, but you raised him from the dead. And thank you that you sent the Holy Spirit to us to encourage us to be our helper and our strength and guide. We rely upon you and ask that you take us by the hand and lead us. And hear us now as we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. So my friends, have a blessed day. God be with you. God willing, I'll see you all again tomorrow.